What's going on everybody here we are another week at the home theater hobbies and this week we've got my full review of the SVS PB 1000 so let's get to it so here it is this is the SVS PB 1000 and I am really excited to talk about it this week a lot of you had a lot of great comments and questions about it so we're gonna to try to get into it in this review but before we do I want to ask all of you new subscribers go down there hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you can be alerted anytime we release new videos. Also, check out all the videos you want. There's a Home Theater Basics series, there's an unboxing series, and many other things. So get in there, check out the videos, we really appreciate it. So this is it, this is the SVS PB1000. PB stands for Ported Box, this has a single port, and it has a 10 inch driver. It has a frequency response from 19 hertz all the way to 270 hertz. The power supply supplies 300 watts RMS and 700 watts peak. That port I mentioned earlier, it is three and a half inches in diameter. It has a height of just under 19 inches, a width of 15 inches, and a depth just under 20 inches. And it weighs about 46 pounds. Now the first thing you're gonna notice when you see the subwoofer is obviously how it looks. It has a nice black ash finish and it's got these curved corners right here along the bottom and the top and I like it. There is also a small curve to the grill here up front and that is a black cloth grill, which is different from the PB2000 that I reviewed over a year ago. The PB2000 had a metal grill, but this one has a cloth grill. And honestly, I think I prefer the cloth grill over the metal grill on the PB2000. But this grill, it just pulls off very, very easily. I don't have it on there very tight. As you can see, you've got that SVS logo there up front, and that's the back of it. It's got these little, uh, I guess you can call them nubbins here along each one of the corners so that they plug into those four corners there. There's your 10 inch driver, and there's your three and a half inch port that I mentioned earlier. Right there is your indicator light, which lets you know if it's on or off. If it's blue, the subwoofer is on, and if it's off, it's red. Along the rear, you have your volume, phase adjustment, crossover setting, your auto standby slash on switch, your trigger input, your line level out if you have an additional subwoofer, your line level in from your receiver, your speaker wire connections for left and right, and to the left of that you have your power switch and your power connection. The volume knob, phase, and crossover setting all have defined stops as they move throughout the range so you can be very precise in your adjustments of these controls. Along the bottom, you have four feet that are coated in rubber or covered in rubber, so they should provide some isolation if you have hardwood floors. But if you wanna put something else on there, you can just unscrew these feet like I'm doing here and place some other ones on there, and there you go. I'm not sure what the thread is for these feet, but I'm sure if you check SVS's website or call them, they'll tell you, and you can get some feet to put in there. So let's talk features and controls. Overall, this is a pretty standard subwoofer. It's got a volume adjustment, a phase adjustment, and a crossover setting, and that's pretty much it. You can't do any extended EQ like some of the competitors. It doesn't have an app like the uh, PB16 Ultra, uh, and it doesn't have a port plug like some of the other competitors. If you want a sealed version of this, look at the SB1000 from SBS's website but otherwise it works out pretty well. It's really pretty much plug and play. You just plug it in and it just works. SVS has already set it up, so it pretty much just works for you, which is really, really nice. Now speaking of plug and play, let's talk about setup. Setup is actually really, really easy. The first thing I did was I took this out of the box and then I went and I put it in my main listening position, uh, connected it and started just playing some subwoofer tones. Then I crawled around my room to find where it's, the subwoofer sounded the best. I took the subwoofer, I put it in that place, and at that point, I ran my Odyssey calibration software on my receiver to set the volume. Once I got the volume set up, it was time to watch plenty of movies and listen to a lot of music, and so that's what I did. Speaking of listening to music and watching movies, let's take a quick break and listen to a couple of sound samples so you can hear how this sounds.
Now, I hope you enjoyed those sound samples. Uh, that one may have been a little bit lower than some of my other sound samples have been, and that's because this was actually placed in the back corner of my room because that's where it sounded the best, and that's where I put my mic so I could record the audio from the subwoofer. So you didn't get much in the vocals and stuff like that from the movies. All you really got was mainly subwoofer sound, and that's kind of what I wanted you to get here. But speaking of that, let's move on. Let's talk about my ratings for this subwoofer. I'm going to rate this subwoofer from one to five in various categories, one being the absolute worst and five being the absolute best. So let's get to that. The first category I'm gonna rank is design. And from a design standpoint, I give this a four and a half out of five. I really like the way this subwoofer looks, to be honest with you. Um, compared to its bigger brother, the PB2000, it's a little bit shorter and just a little bit smaller, and I like that. When I finished my unboxing, I had this sitting on the floor down here, and I just looked back at it, and I decided, I was like, I really like the way it looks. Um, Black Ash, the Black Ash finish is growing on me. It wasn't a finish I really liked before, um, but it's growing on me and I like it. And I also like the cloth grill up front, like I mentioned earlier. The cloth grill is really nice. So overall, I think this is a great design. It's a sturdy cabinet. Had no issues there. And I really do think that SVS did a good job with this subwoofer. From a features and control standpoint, I give this a three. It has everything that you need, but there are no additional thrills. There's no app, there's no base extension, there's no port plug, nothing like that. So it's just, it's very basic, but at the same time, it does what it's supposed to do. So I give it a three. The next category I'm gonna rank is sound quality slash performance, and I give it a four and a half out of five. This subwoofer has a nice balanced sound to it. And what I mean by that is, it plays well in the mid bass, but it also plays deep if it really needs to. And it's slightly tuned a little bit more for, I would say, mid bass than good deep bass, but it does do deep bass. My uh, my Sue Research bass test CD that I use whenever I'm just trying out anything, and you heard that track earlier, it's got um, different frequency regimes on it, and it'll, this will play at 20 hertz, and you can actually hear it. It's an audible 20 hertz, which a lot of subwoofers don't do that. So I think that SVS is being accurate in their description of a 19 hertz to 270 hertz. This does play all those frequencies, and so that's really good. It does play deep. But the other thing I like about this from a performance standpoint is that it just, like I said, is balanced. It's balanced in a way that a lot of subwoofers aren't, and so you're going to enjoy yourself. Now, one of the things I did notice after I calibrated was I had it set at about 75 or I guess 78 dB, something like that, um, THX, and I did have to turn the volume up just a nut, just a little bit to get a little bit more output out of it like I like to hear. So you may have to turn it up just a, nut, a little bit if you want a little bit more output, but for the, everything else, it sounds really good. And if you're thinking about, do I should I go single or dual? I would definitely say go dual, then you may not have to turn it up as much, but it sounds really, really good. Now the last category I'm gonna rank is value. And from a value standpoint, I give this a four out of five. This is a $500 subwoofer, and for 500 bucks, it is a great deal in my opinion. Now, you can get some other subwoofers that I think are better for just a little bit more money, like the Sue Research VTF-2 MK5 or Mark V. Um, that will set you back another, let's say it'd be about $600 ship, but it does sound better in my opinion than this does, but this does sound really, really good. So from a value standpoint, I give it a four out of five. Now that we've done with the ratings, let's talk about how this compares to some of the other subwoofers that I've tested, because I'm sure a lot of you want to know, what do I think about this compared to the RSL Speedwoofer 10S and the Monoprice Monolith 10? And let's talk about those. So the RSL Speedwoofer 10S, that was probably the most fun I've ever had listening to a subwoofer. It just had a nice mid bass that was just really, really fun to listen to. I mean, explosions were even fun. I, I just really enjoyed that mono, uh, the RSL Speedwoofer 10S. Now the Monoprice Monolith 10 didn't have as good mid bass, but it had great deep bass. I mean, that thing played deep and it played well deep. And I think that's where it was mainly tuned. And so that was really good if you like deep bass. And quite frankly, deep bass is addictive. So that was fun as well, but a different kind of fun. It was definitely more business than let's say the RSL Speedwell for tennis. Well, this one, the PB1000, I think slots right in the middle. It's definitely more tuned for mid bass than deep, deep bass like the Monoprice. But at the same time, it's, it's got a nice balanced sound to it. And if you go dual with these, I don't think you can go wrong at all. So. Between those three, um, if you're looking for a nice balance, I'd probably go with this, the PB1000. 
Now moving on to talk about the PB2000 versus this, the PB2000 is a bigger subwoofer, so it plays deeper and you get more output. That's basically the main difference. I think this is more balanced. Um, for those of you who may be wondering, should I go with one PB2000 or two PB1000s? I'd say go with two PB1000s versus one PB2000, mainly because it's just a better balance, to be honest with you. Um, now if it's dual PB2000s or dual PB1000s, definitely go dual PB2000s, but this really does do a good job. And quite frankly, if those of you that have dual PB1000s, this is just the single, this is the only one that I have, I'm kind of envious because this sounds great. This is a really, really good subwoofer and I've really enjoyed my time with it. Overall, I really like the subwoofer. I think it's a great subwoofer and it is for anybody who's looking for a nice balanced subwoofer under $500. Now, like I said, there are some subwoofers that you can get for a little bit more money, but if you only want to spend $500, that is your absolute maximum. This is probably the subwoofer you want to get. If you want really good deep bass, go with that Monolith Monoprice 10, or if you want something that's just fun, has a nice fun characteristic to it, pick up that RSL Speedwoofer 10S. But if you want something that's nice and balanced, this is probably the one you want to get. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment. Consider supporting us at patreon.com slash home theater hobby. Use that Amazon link in the description below. We'll talk to you next time.